All right. Uh, welcome to Fair the Burn 67. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today is a very special episode. Um, today we have, man, someone that just puts his health on the line to chase his dreams. We have a man on a mission uh, we have someone who wants to keep uh, his destiny in his hands because he knows that if it's in his hands, then it's in God's hands. Uh, today is the bantamweight champion of Steel Fist Fight Night. Ladies and gentlemen, please introduce Kawhi the Throwing Samoan Thompson. Let me kick it back. Let me, let me kick it back. Let me kick it back. Let me, let me kick it back. Let me kick it back. Let me, let me kick it back. Hey boy, right there, what you gonna do? I'm honored. Always, I'm honored. man. I'm honored by the introduction. Dude, I mean, uh, just seeing your journey from now till being the champ, you know, like I inter- I I reached out to you after your first fight with Darian because I knew yeah, yeah. I knew, and you know, now both people that I've interviewed from Steel Fist are both champs. Dude, greatness recognizes greatness. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, dog. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, dude, how you been? Uh, how you been since your fight? Dude, I've been good, man. Just been lazy been nice have a little time off to just rest and heal up <laughs> you don't really get that much time in in this sport so when you do get the time to heal you gotta take advantage of it absolutely man uh eat, getting any good eats in since then dude i've been eating like crazy i've been eating i'll tell you that much i had some cream barbecue last night man nice banging Can't dude banging Oh How yeah. Much, what are you at now? You want to you want to expose, oh. you want to expose what you're at? you said like a good two hundred or what? Dude, I don't even want to check the scale, bro. The scale scares me. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my time before I hop back on there. One of my one of my coaches asked me that last night. I'm like, dude, I, mm, I don't I don't like checking the scale. <laughs> yeah, you got a little bit of that Patty Pimblet syndrome in you afterwards. You try oh. to Dude, not as bad as Patty, but I I definitely understand how he does it and why he does it. Well, I mean, it's a real thing, dude. Like the diets that you guys have to go through, you know, like you kind of, I feel like you have to spoil yourself afterwards because of what you have to do to get down to that weight. Yeah. Well, so the crazy thing about cutting weight, especially because I cut from like 150, 155 ish down to 135. Mm -hmm. And so like the first 10 pounds, like once you get to 145, you like are just craving like junk food. Like you just want like, like, I don't know if you've ever, like, uh, in the gas station, you know, all the advertisements in the gas station, it, like, never works a- outside of camp. You just mm-hmm. look at it and, like, oh, it's not that appetizing or, like, enticing. But, like, when you're in camp and you're, like, down to 145, like, everything looks good. And then the cut from 45 to 35, near the end, like, all you really want to eat is, like, water and, like, fruit. And it's, mm-hmm. like, the weirdest thing. Your cravings go away, and you just want what's good for you. But. Interesting. You gotta, you gotta You're staying. Go ahead. Sorry. No, you, you got to stay loyal to your cravings. So I, I've been loyal to them. So I've been eating. <laughs> That's what we like to hear, bro. The ads work on you. You're saying, like, well, the actual advertisements for stuff? Like, not, like, the deals? Well, like, how do how... I don't really buy, I don't really spend a lot of money on like food stuff, especially at gas stations. Like, sure. yeah, you know I mean, I'm barely there. But when you're like cutting weight and you're like out of it, those like the colors make sense, like the, the, the wording makes sense. You're like, man, that does sound good. Even though it never ever sounds good any other time in my life during camp, you're like, wow, I want to go down to 7 Eleven and eat a Slurpee. <laughs> but like, I haven't even had a Slurpee yet since so Dude, I, I, don't wish, know. I wish idaho still had 7-elevens man i'd be get i'd be get i'd be way bigger than i am now dude i'd be eating so many slurpees uh maybe know. it's a good idaho thing we don't have, have i don't know idaho didn't have 7-elevens that's crazy we used to but they got rid of them when like when i was a kid oh true true, true. yeah true. so man uh was this your second defense of the belt yeah yeah this was my second defense yeah I'm going to ask you the standard Steel Fist uh, fight night question here. Uh, what surprised you in there? Oh, Why? man. How did, how, did, like, how did the fight go? 
from what you thought it was going to be to like what it was? Um, no, I, I knew it was going to be a hard fight. I knew it was going to be a long fight because I'm like, um, so my opponent, he had like three fights, finished all those guys in a minute. And I knew he's going to come out like super strong the first round, the first two rounds. But I knew I was going to just like, my game plan was to like weather that storm and then start picking it up later on. But it was kind of hard to pick it up with my condition for the fight. But it was fine. Like it was, it was exactly what I expected. I expected him to go for a little more submissions, but like all in all, it's, I mean, it's kind of hard. Like that question is so hard because in an MMA, it's like, everything's surprising so it makes it not surprising does that make sense Mm -hmm. like like it's such a wild chaotic thing that like it's very hard to be surprised yeah like how how much are you remembering in the fight yeah well i don't really remember too much (laughs) to be honest some fights i remember a lot but like the uh i remember like certain conversations i have my coaches in the corner I remember like certain moments, but like all in all, like the fight, like it, bl- it like blurs by you and your brain like can't like remember it because it's like such an emotional thing. Right. And so yes. it's just like, there's just a bunch of little things that happen that you like forget about. Hmm. Yeah, man. Have you, have you gone back and watched it at all? No, nah, I haven't watched it. That was a pretty shiz. That was, that was a bad performance by me. So yeah, I don't really like. You called them really out again. You were it. upset. Like, you were upset with your performance, it seemed like. Yeah, it was just, I was super, like, flat that night. Um, I hate to be that guy that sounds like I'm giving excuses, but whatever. I don't really care. <laughs> and so, I was just, yeah, I felt super flat, super, like, stuck in my stuck in my feet. And so, it was very frustrating because I know, like, what I gave to everyone wasn't my 100%. And it, it kind of frustrates you because in fighting, you only have, like, you only have one shot every three months to do that. Mm-hmm. And so when it like doesn't do well, it's not like I have a fight this week. I mean, where I can kind of redeem myself. So I was kind of, I was really frustrated with that performance because I was like, man, I'm what I showed you guys versus how good I actually am is two different things. So I just got to figure it out. You know what I mean? Back to the drawing board and um, make sure I show up next time better. Well, and can you explain your condition for anybody watching? Like going uh, the fight? So, like, probably, like, a month before the fight, I was sparring with one of my coaches, and, um, man, we're going at it, and he's, man, so this is my coach that he's coached me since I was, like, 14 in wrestling, and, uh, this is my coach, Nick, Nick Lokeny, and, um, we had the little gloves on, we were grinding, and I tried to go for, like, a solid body shot on him, but he's, mm-hmm. he's a little, sl- he's a little slim fat right now, and so, he's got an hour to layer of nice belly fat, and he's got abs just underneath it. And so mm-hmm. my hand was going. I go for the body shot. My hand went in. Then as it went in, it went down like that. And instant pain. And I was like, oh, that hurt pretty bad. Yeah. But I didn't want to, like, I wasn't going to. That dude called me out, and I wasn't trying to pull out. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like a it's like a man card at that point. So you called me out. It's like, That's you know a warrior I mean? mentality, man. Well, that's what, like, that's, yeah, that's what, that's the mentality you kind of got to have, even though it's not, like, the smartest mentality. If you don't have that, I don't know how long you're going to last, because you're always going to get banged up before fights. You're always going to have something wrong. And if you always kind of give yourself an excuse or give yourself a way out, you'll never fight. Mm. And so, uh... Yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, I I think you can say what you want about your performance to me. And I know, you know, I know your hand was broke and you were uh, not coming in 100 percent, obviously. But that dude seems really good. Um, Jamin, Jamin Doors. Jamin, how do you say his last name? Do you know? I have no idea, bro. Jamin no Doors, I think. Uh, but he that guy seems like he is clean. Like, it seems like he has a lot of clean techniques and like the three dudes that he beat before, I think he choked them all. Didn't he? Yeah. 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 Uh, and he'd never been out of the first round. And I think you 
while being in not a hundred percent, it still would have been a puzzle for you to figure out. Cause yeah, that no, dude, he's good. He's long. And I think he's, uh, I think he's really clean. And to me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, bro. Me being the, the armchair, uh, analyst yeah. that I am. Do you, do you stand bladed? Like, do you think you stand more bladed or more square? I stand more bladed. For sure. And I think that was in, was tough for you to do with the range with your stance and him yeah, yeah, yeah. taller. And then in the fourth round, bro, you come out full Philly shell. Yeah. Full yeah. On Sean Strickland, Polynesian Sean Strickland, like Philly shell. Uh, and I thought three, you started to pick it up around two, like the end of two, you really started to find your, your range and kind of go, I thought a little bit more square as opposed to bladed. And yeah, then yeah. three, you really dominated. And then four, you came out, dude, like total, like Floyd, like Philly shell style. Do you remember why that happened? Well, I was in the corner and my coach, my coach, Johnny Paul and Nick were all like, bro, you got to pressure him more. You got to like put it on him. You got to pick it up to steal these rounds and i remember like because I, I love watching him me and i remember telling him like yeah like sean strickland him yeah i mean just like always keep that constant pressure philly shell and it's very hard like a lot of mma guys don't do as much boxing rounds and so if you've never dealt with someone doing the philly shell it's kind of it's, it's a tricky puzzle and to have someone that was doing bladed stance for the past three rounds they come out with the philly shell like it was just a little, little, tri little tricky, crazy man. Uh, and I thought, I thought four was the closest round. Um, and at the end of the fight, man, I'm gonna be honest, I just didn't know. I thought the fight was so close. How did you yeah. feel like before? Because Michael seemed very confident at the end of that fight. How did you feel like before the decision was made? I felt like I lost rounds one and two just based on how I was feeling. But then I felt like one, three through five. Mm. Because I was just like, I knew I lost one because he had me in like at the triangle and then he put me in a guillotine at the very end. I was like chilling at both those, but it just looks bad for, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was, I was in no danger, but I was just like, all right, I probably lost those on like the judge's eyes. And then two, I can't really remember. Cause I haven't watched the fight back. Two was but close. Remember, two yeah, was close. Yeah. Two was close. But I just remember, like, I think, I don't know. I think the difference was, like, when we were in, like, grappling or this or that, I was trying to, like, hurt him. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he was trying the same to me when he was, like, on top or in other positions, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's evident. Uh, and I, I even went back and rewatched the fight today, and I would say that that is what gave you round four in my eyes was any time you guys were kind of tied up or uh, grappling that you were still trying to do damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. commentators, man, one time, dude, <laughs> uh, one time you threw, a, you threw a knee to him uh, into his body when he was on the ground. And I thought it was sick. I thought it was clean. I thought it was vicious, honestly, like as a technique. You kind of threw your entire body into his. And the commentator was like, whoa, Kawhi, you got to be careful. They're getting real close to the head, to someone on the ground. And I went, Kawhi knows what he's doing, man. Uh, yeah. And at the end of round four, the guy goes, respect to this guy. He, he does it every week. I know I know he's a good dude. And he knows a lot about the sport. But he goes, yeah, I think Michael's winning all four rounds here. And I go, are we watching the same fight, bro? No oh, man. <laughs> dude, three was for sure Kawhi and four was close, dude. Like, one and two, yeah, I could see giving it to him. But I was like, man, what are we talking about right now? And and Darian, thank God for Darian, dude. Darian was like, yeah, I don't know. I think Kawhi's trying to do more damage, like, when they're when they're grappling. So, kind of depends on what the judges see, the subjective. Yeah, it, it's, it's so hard because I've done commentary, and it's very hard. And it's like, you can't really take it personal. Because, like, yeah, like, the, the guy's just doing, like, what he sees it. For sure. And it's hard because, especially in MMA, there's so many different techniques and backgrounds. And so a lot of the times that, like, like if they prefer grappling or if they like jujitsu more, they'll give it more weight in their head. And they're not trying to be biased. Like, that's just how they see it. 
and versus like someone that's like a a striker sees it versus someone that's fought. It's just eh, can't right. blame them. Can't blame them. And I never, I don't, I feel like personally, I never get their respect. But it's like whatever. You, like if I'm going for people's respect, if I really care about their opinions, uh, I'm gonna do anything. I'll just, yeah. You know I mean, never put you put yourself out there. So it's like it, it comes with the comes with the job description, in my opinion. Facts, dude. <laughs> Um, as someone who's also pursuing stuff in the in a spotlight to a certain sense, I get that you can't really take it too personally. But I was just like, "You're right, man. You don't get the respect. People say some out of pocket things about you, but you keep you keep pushing, bro. You keep pushing forward." Yeah, well, yeah. I think those out of pocket things are always going to come, and it's like annoying. It's like, man, like blah 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 blah. But it's just like, oh, these people just have opinions and they see things differently, and it's just like, all right, whatever, like. Life goes on. I'll do better next time. I'll, I'll get them. I'll get. I'll get them to be fans of mine one day. <laughs> facts, facts, dude. They're all coming. They're all coming in. Uh, my last question about the fight, bro, is: uh, Did you notice the lights at all? Like the weird yeah. light. Yeah, the lights were off for like, I don't know, the first round or second round. I can't first remember two. when. First two. First two. I remember because I put him his back towards my corner's cage, and the lights were like in my eyes, and I was like. Oh, this is terrible. Then I had to like circle around to get him his back. So I put my back towards the cage because it was frustrating. I was like, come on, guys. But no, it was fine. Like, I don't remember it too much. It wasn't that big of a deal. Just like a few spots. Like, that's one of them. Yeah, it was like annoying, but it was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, you can't let those things like build up in your head. Yeah, also, I, like, thought, because... I thought you were using it a little bit, bro, because you were you would like kind of be in the shadows, and then you would like you would you would uh, blitz him, and I was like, oh, oh it's like tracking this right now, trying to use the uh, environment to my advantage, like a ninja, bro. Oh man, I wish, I wish <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, it was funny because my sister in law that was there at the fights, she was like, "Hey, turn off the lights!" and like screamed it, and I heard it. I was just like, all right, who is that? Who is that loud person? Later comes out to be my sister in law. <laughs> feather man. Um, yeah, dude. So I got some other uh like just general MMA questions for you, real quick. Just stuff that's going on. Um what do you think is going on with Conor McGregor, man? You think this guy is ever gonna fight again? Yeah. Man, I don't know. I feel bad for Michael Chandler, though. That's for sure. Dude, once you break your leg like that, dude, that's rough. And to, like, actually prepare properly for a fight against someone that's dangerous like Michael Chandler, like, you just put your body through absolute garbage. Mm. And, and, like, if you're, like, really preparing for a fight like that, of that magnitude, it's like, man, that's crazy. It's like two days, your body's getting beat up. Ah, man, I feel bad. Do you think, I I mean, I think it's hard to kind of blame Michael Chandler for waiting because it's it's Connor, you know, it's the biggest payday. But at at what point do you think you, before all of this happened, like when 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 would be the right time to pull out? You know, because it's kind of crazy that he's been waiting what now for like two to three years for this. Yeah, he's been waiting a while. I think two years. But at the same time, it's like Michael Chandler's produced so many wars for us. I wonder if like he was like already retiring and he's just like, yeah, one more big fight right off to the sunset versus like trying to get the championship again. You know what I mean? Right. But I think mentally he's kind of like checked out. He's only checked out for big fights. And if you get that Connor fight promised to you, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, man. Uh it's a lot of money, a lot of glory. And I think like, I don't think he had it in him to, like, go fight some other, you know what I mean? Like, what other 55-pounder could he fight that would be, like, a high-level, high-payday fight? At this point, bro, he's not fighting 55 anymore, for sure. Michael Chandler's a big boy, dude. I think he would go up and fight somebody at 70 minimum, bro. Yeah, but he's pretty small for 50. Well, he's short. He is 70, a short. 70, those dudes, those dudes are big. You know who else was short for their weight division though, bro, was Mike Tyson. And they both got they both got that same nickname, you know what I'm saying? That Iron Mike. Oh man, that well, that's true. That's true. 
Uh, that's like two different sports and two different styles. So it's like he is very short, but I don't know. I saw like Leon Edwards when he came to Utah like two years ago because he was at my gym training or getting ready, like final touches on his camp, right? He wasn't training with us, obviously. He was just there with his team. Yeah. And that dude's yeah. big. I'm like, this dude is a tall dude. And to think that like Michael Chandler would be fighting one of them and Michael Chandler's like my size. Well, obviously he's not my size, right? But he's like my height. Like yeah. dude, that's that's a big problem. Are you five seven? Yeah. Yeah. Five uh, seven on a good day. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> With the hair. With the uh, hair. you did you see Leon Edwards like hitting mitts or anything or like yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him work the mitts, work the bag. Dude, he's crisp, bro. Super crisp. Fast. Super fast. That dude, man, that dude, that dude is good. Dude, the fact that those two head kicks both happened in Salt Lake, the Leon and the Gaethje Borieg head kick is nuts, dude. Dude, it's crazy. I, um, I think UFC is going to like announce another Salt Lake card in like October. I think they're going to come back. I don't know who's going to be on that card, but I'm excited. Bro, do you That's think you have an advantage if you fought somewhere that wasn't in Salt Lake because of like the elevation? Yeah, I think so. For sure. Like yeah, would just you because... become Sonic if you fought in California? Would you just have like just energy? Have all that. Oh man, I don't know. The one the, I I got when I fight out of state, I'll let you know how how different it is. Because, uh, man, it's a big difference. And you, like, saw it. The elevation, people don't people don't put as much respect on it, but it's a big, big difference. Yeah, absolutely. So, I don't know. Absolutely. Do you think you'd ever do something like that? Like, do you think you could go, like, fight someone else's, like, champion in another state? Yeah, I'd be down for it. I'd be down for it. Definitely got to talk to my coach to get the right – um. Like the right promotion has to reach out to me, but that'd be super fun. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be super fun. I just thought about that, dude. I was like, yeah, that would be that'd be wild, dude. Like a super fight between two promotions. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, that'd be sick. What do you think about uh, this? Speaking of Mike Tyson, this Mike Tyson Jake Paul kind of dropout, and I've heard that Mike Perry's stepping in. Yeah, dude, I'm excited for the Mike Perry Jake Paul fight. That's the actual fight. I I feel bad. People that like want to watch Mike Tyson fight, it's like why? Like what? Like I love Mike Tyson, but it's like we're like we all can like be truthful here that he's almost sixty, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like when people like don't, it's like yeah, but he's Mike Tyson. But it's like I know he's Mike Tyson, but the dude's almost sixty. I'm like kind of glad he dropped out. And I think Jake Paul's going to have his hands full with Mike Perry. Bro, the last person that I would want to see, if if Jake Paul wants to win, the last person he should fight is Mike Perry. Now, I know that, like, bare knuckle is different than actual boxing because the range is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. the gloves, Mike the defense. Mike Perry's a dog, bro. Yeah, no, 100%. So it's, I'm excited for that one. I'm really excited for that one. I don't know if I'll watch it, but, like, I'm excited. I'll watch it on YouTube afterwards when it's free. You know, I'm going to pay for the card, but. Yeah, no, 100%. I'll, yeah. Well, that is going to be the hardest part is Mike Perry's got to get back into boxing with boxing gloves. That's two different sports. The range is different. The defense is different. How you set things up is a little bit different. So, I'm, I'm, I mean. Good. Well, I'm glad that like Jake Paul's kind of listening to the fans because it's like, dude, if you fought Mike Tyson, it's a lose lose. Mm-hmm. If if you win, it's like, okay, bro, like you just beat up everyone's legend. Like no one likes you for that. And if you lose, it's like, dude, you just lost to a sixty year old. Like there's no there's no upside. Yeah, I kind of think Mike Tyson. This is crazy. Like. I kind of think if everyone wanted to see him get knocked out, Mike Tyson could have done it. Because I know that he's 60, bro, and I didn't want to see it either, but I was like, Mike Tyson's been doing this for so long, and I think they're doing two-minute rounds or something like that. Like, they cut the round length. Yeah, cut it short, yeah. And that's good for Mike. And I really think that he 
would have at least two or three rounds in him and just come out like old Mike Tyson dude, just bobbing and weaving. And what's, what's Jake Paul going to do with that, dude? Dude, I, you know, I don't know. Don't know. We'll, we'll see if it happens. Because, you know, they're talking about, like, having it get postponed until, like, September, October. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. We'll see if it happens. So I don't know. I feel like I'd, like, have to watch that with my, my eyes shut. You know what I mean? For sure. Through the finger. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to see that. No, dude, I, I agree. It's not something that I would really be interested in watching either. I was just like, it's interesting from like a spectacle standpoint, but I don't want to see an old man fight. I really just don't. Yeah, yeah. It's like, just let him let him live a legend. For sure. Just just pay him to show up at fighting events. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's other ways to make money. Let him do hot boxing, dude. Just let him do his podcasts and hang out and do all of his drugs that Mike Tyson wanted to do. Let him just hang out. Uh, yeah, well, actually might be better for to get, to get him back in the ring. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Uh, uh, I got some questions to like follow up on from our last podcast real quick, dude. Yeah, bro. Uh, have you ever been to Hawaii? Yeah, 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 yeah. I last time I went it was like twenty twenty one, I think. But yeah, I got all I got a ton of family over there still. And so yeah, so whenever I go back just see family the whole time. Family and eat. Do the food over there is so nice. I love it. Yeah, Hawaii's sick. Uh like what is do you have like any like crazy like Hawaii stories or like a favorite memory from Hawaii? I don't know if I have any, like, crazy, crazy stories. Just because, like, when I would go with my family, it was, like, when we were super young. But then, like, the last couple times I went, it was, like, for, like, funerals and stuff. It was just family time. Mm. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of hard to get, like, stories from vacations, in my opinion. Have you ever seen of... lava, bro? Yeah. I have, like, a picture of me, like, next to lava as, like, a little kid. That's I've been cool. walking around, like, the Big Island. That's cool. Why is it sick? Have you ever been? I've never been. No, I've always yeah. wanted to go. I've just heard it's, well, I've heard it's crazy expensive, and I'm sure if you have family there and you can like stay with them, it's a little better, you know. But I've just heard that it's, it's, it's a lot of money to go. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but I think it's worth it. For sure, for sure. Build the island life a little bit, go a little slower. What what island is your family on? Almost most all of them are on Oahu right now. Hmm. And they had like all the, they're all, most of them are in Laie. It's like my whole grandpa's family, like that's where they settled. They settled in Laie. So, and my grandpa has like 12 siblings. Wow. Oh, he actually might have 15, but he's the 12th, like the oldest, like the third oldest. But yeah, so it's like all the siblings and their families. Yeah, I got, man, man. Pawnee and families get big, they get really big. What's your great grandpa doing, dude? It's kind of, man. It's I, really, I think it's just, it was just different back then. It's different. Uh, that's wild, bro. Like, is it? Do you know if it's all the same? Like, great grand, great grandfather, and great grandmother that had like fifteen kids. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the same. It's just, it's just different. Like the, uh, I think back then it was just different, bro. It's like it's like a Mormon family plus the Polynesian family. It's like yeah, that, that just that just equates to a lot of children. Yeah. Like that's right. like a, so it's like when we have family reunions, dude, it is bumping. It's packed. Like, do you know all of your family members by name? Oh, dude, that's freaking hard. So like <laughs> the problem was so like so like my grandpa was like really close with some of his siblings, right? And mm-hmm. so like our families would grow up close, right? But then there's like some other cousins that I like find, like I like I still find out about, and I'm just like, no, that's crazy, right? That's crazy. Right. We're second cousins, and I've never met you. Yeah, you know I mean, because like everyone kind of has their own like pockets of like well, we're like these siblings were close, so they kind yeah, of yeah, it's like these three siblings are close, or these three siblings are close. But no, it's man, it's super cool because it's like. You you find out about your cousins and you're like, oh no way, that's so sick. And you know what I mean, and it's just cool to be connected to them. 
And I feel like that's like maybe the difference between like Polynesian families and like American families is like we know our grandpa's siblings and our grandma's siblings, but I feel like a lot of American families don't know who their grandparents' siblings are. And so like that line kind of gets like, yeah, you know I mean, it's just yeah. a little different. I, I think my grandma has I think my grandma has four siblings and I've only met one of them. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the difference. And it's crazy cuz my grandpa like he died in uh 2021. He's like a just the nicest guy. But like when you look at all of his brothers, they they like carbon copies of each other. Mm. And it's like interesting because I remember how my grandpa used to feel when I used to like hug him when I was little. And then when I hug like my grandpa's siblings, it's like the same feeling. And it's just like, whoa, this is this wow. is crazy. Yeah, that is super it's... nuts. Do you have any carbon copies of you and your family? Or are you one of a kind, bro? Oh, man. Well, nah, always, there's always going to be another carbon copy. I got some nieces that are mean. I got some nieces that are, bru- that are bruisers. They got the same hair as you, too. I got the, they got the mullet rocking. Nah, nah. They, their hair looks a lot better. Be real. Uh, speaking of big families, man, how's the girl situation going for you? Oh man, I I gotta keep that under wraps for the time being, bro. Fair enough. It's kind of hard. I guess sometimes I forget, like, like sometimes I forget how different MMA is, and like to me, MMA like fighting is just normal. Like I don't know why it's normal. It's just like oh, this is just what I do. Like this is nothing too crazy, but then I forget. Like, I forget, like, to people in Utah, like, especially, like, members of the church, like, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Mormons, I forget, like, how different it is to, like, just be a member and try and chase the dream of fighting because it's just, like, so, like, oh, what, like, isn't there something else you should be doing? Yeah, you know I mean, does that yeah. make sense? There's not a stigma behind it, but it's just, like, sometimes I forget how different that makes you. Yeah, you know I mean? Does that make sense? And so Absolutely. sometimes it sometimes it kind of affects the dating life. Mm. Do you think that's know. because of like mentally or because of like kind of the time commitment that you have to spend to MMA? Probably like the time commitment and it's like not you're not living the the basic life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it, it's I'm taking a big chance with my life, you know what I mean? Like foregoing a lot of like financial security foregoing a lot of like basic comforts you know what i mean to ch- try and like go after the stream and so i don't know i don't know or maybe i'm just weird maybe 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 these girls just don't like me no bro i think i think you're onto something man i think that uh definitely the mentality you're gonna have to have but i think it's gonna take a spec like definitely a special person to want to uh come alongside of you in that and yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah yeah support you you know because it's it, people say it all the time you know fighting is kind of a selfish pursuit like there's so much that you have to give up and the people around you would almost have to be okay giving up for you to like chase your dream yeah no 100 percent, 100 percent. but now that there's yeah there's there's a special person out there absolutely tell them you're you're great, bro. You're you're a great guy, bro. Like there's gonna be someone one day that, that God's gonna give you for sure. Uh but talking about like financial security, you work at Blackbeard? Yeah, yeah. Do you train at work, bro? Or is this just some like Instagram like uh bro. debate? Well, so me and my two older brothers. KJ and Kwani, we we do Blackbeard out of KJ's garage. So yeah, okay. the house has like a side garage onto it. And what we've done is we've added like mats to the garage. We've added like a bag to the garage. And so half the garage is Blackbeard, then the other half is like training stuff. And so what I do for like my camps and how I fight and how I train is I bring all my coaches to one place and we put out the mats in my brother's house. Where they, we sometimes we do it in the basement. Other times we just do it on the driveway next to the garage or sometimes we do it in the garage and we just all grind there and i found that that's helped me so much because having all three of my coaches johnny poa nick low kenny and davin lao as like boxing kickboxing wrestling and jujitsu all in the same spot man it's helped me out so much 
And so, yeah, so a lot of times I do train just at Blackbeard. Is, is that like during work though, or is it like after you're done working? Well, so, well, when I train with those guys, it's like after I'm done working. Or there's sometimes where like one of my coaches can only come during like in the middle of the day. And so I mainly train. So I mainly train at UCTC with Shone, with our boxing. And then for jujitsu, I go over to Davin Lau's house. He has like a garage and we have mats down there. And so me and him just train one on one in his garage, and then on Saturdays, we all train at at Blackbeard. So I don't really work Saturdays. So we just we just put in like three hours of just hard work and grinding, and it's super cool. All my all my coaches together because I could just sit back and their minds all work, and they do. You know I mean, like we're all on the same page, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, I mean, it's so cool. It's like the coolest thing to experience. How much of your training do you uh, decide? Or do you kind of like let your coaches like like as far as. um, Like what you do you ever go, okay, I want to work on this or is a lot of like, okay, Kawhi, you need to work on this. So we're going to kind of do this. Yeah, it's mainly the second part. Yeah, because I trust these guys so much that like when they tell me like, okay, we need to do this, this and that. It's like. Let's do it. Let's do it. And so yeah, so my like so on Mondays mainly boxing, Tuesdays jujitsu, Wednesdays boxing, Thursdays kickboxing, Friday night jujitsu rounds, then Saturdays a lot of uh, MMA rounds. Mm. So it's pretty it's pretty balanced. Pretty balanced. Are you sparring for your like MMA rounds? Are you sparring your coaches or do you bring like in other people to spar too? Um, it's a mixture. A lot of times I spar with Nick and I do a lot of, uh, grappling rounds with, uh, Davin. And then on Saturdays, sometimes we're bringing in other people to come give me some kickboxing, some Muay Thai work, or sometimes it's not. It just depends on who's available. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of hard to get, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, if you're available, they come to, and I'll usually like reach out to them so that, yeah. So that's, that's always been fun. Will you only reach out to them if they're also another Islander? Is is that? No, 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 man, freak. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. But no, no, no. I, no, I, I. Sometimes you kind of got to be selfish with who you train with, because certain people, like uh, when you train with them, you just got to be careful, because certain people try and prove a point or like they come in with like a wrong ego on sparring. So I, yeah, so sometimes it's just very very uh cautious of who i go with yeah i mean for sure for sure you don't want to get you don't want to get hurt out here with someone who's trying to be a be a gym hero gym hero yeah exactly so yeah so yeah all right before we wrap up here man my last question for you and this is kind of based off of our last podcast but i kind of wanted to go a little deeper on this yeah bro had talked about how even though you were born into the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints how you still had to go through your own like journey to find out what you believe is true. Can you kind of talk about that? Like, what were you, what what were you thinking? What do you kind of mean like that? Like, what's your story with finding that truth? Well, it's just like, yeah, I mean, like with anything in life, like in order to like really like, What's the word? Like, be converted. Even with fighting, like, even, like, the kids are fighters. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, you were born into fighting. Like, you should be a fighter. It's not that. Like, being born into, like, a fighting family does not make you a fighter. And that's the same thing with the church. Like, being born in the church does not make you, a, like, a solid member. You know what I mean? Like, you have to go through certain experiences, and you have to, like, really test your faith to get to that point. And so, like, in high school, like... I just remember, like, being, like, ooh, probably, like, a sophomore to junior, being, like, am I, like, really, really about it? You know what I mean? Like, am I really about the church? Or am I just, like, another, like, I'm just a part of the church because it's the main church in Utah. You know what I mean? Because there's a big difference. There's a big difference between being a part of the church just because it's the cultural thing to do versus being a part of the church because it's in your heart. 
And I think, I think sometimes people like, uh, mistake that a lot. And so like, I always knew I wanted to like serve a mission. And so I was like, man, like I need to like really like test it. You know what I mean? Like really start reading my scriptures, really start praying and really like developing that personal relationship. Cause if you don't and you go on a mission, like good luck. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're stuck out there. And so just from that experience in high school, just like really like realigning my life with uh, God's will and then also going on a mission and like almost it's not nothing's ever complete in life. You know what I mean? But almost like putting more pieces together and gaining more of a conviction of why the church is, the, you know what I mean? Why I'm a part of the church. Yeah. Do you have any like specific examples of that? Like thing, like pieces that kind of like you, you put together like on your mission or like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. Yeah, no, of course. Like I remember, I remember, I remember my junior year in high school. I remember I had like this Subaru, this like pretty beat up Subaru that my parents like let me use as my mom's old car. Okay. And it was pretty janky. And I remember just like, I remember, like, before this, like, three weeks before, like, I was like, okay, like, am I really about it? Like, I need to, like, start praying and start reading, like, the scriptures, you know what I mean? And then what happens, at least this is what happened to me, is, like, when I was doing that, God, like, really started testing me. I was like, all right, are you really about this? Or are you just, like, doing this because, like, does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Like, are you really about it? So what, what, what he did is I got into a crash on Friday with my Subaru, mm -hmm. and I was, like, pissed because it was, like, I go from like having a car, especially in high school, having all that freedom and like that independence to just drive anywhere from having a car. And then I also had a moped at the time, a scooter. And then a couple of days later on Monday, I almost died on my scooter, my moped, because I was going down into an intersection. And someone decided to shoot the gap and didn't see me. So I had to like brake super hard and it like flew me off my scooter. My scooter got like pretty much totaled. It was crazy. Wow. But that was like all within like a period of like four days. And I remember just being like, like, what, like, it's like, so like, so hard, like, I could just like fall back into like old habits or just comforts or like, you know what I mean? Just like, why am I even trying? Yeah, you know I mean, like, this sucks. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's like, like, I kind of like, uh, I mean, it's uh, less happened, but Job, I think, is a perfect example of stuff like that, like a guy that God test yeah yeah and I, I don't want to compare myself to job because sure. it's like a, but like i said i yeah. said happened bro i'm throwing my hands yes. up I said, let's have it yeah 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 but like to have all yeah you know i mean like to be like okay like are you really about it okay show me like show me like that's put you through like and obviously looking back on it now is like that's not that big of a deal but when you're like 16 17 and you have like basically your own car and your own like scooter to get around you go on dates you could like yeah you know i mean have that independence go work a job and then to, like have dude yeah like have your quote-unquote world be taken away from you in like a matter of like four days it just tests you so that happened and I just remember just being like about it you know what i mean and like yeah yeah this sucks but i'm about it and then serving a mission in fiji it was like the best Best, um, just the most, like, some of the most spiritual experiences that I've had. And just being around those people and the culture over there is just so beautiful. And I just remember just being, like, so grateful for that. You know what I mean? And just certain things, like, certain examples. And, like, you really see, like, people's lives when they follow the word of God versus when they don't. And that just strengthens your conviction even more that like you need to follow the word of God because their life's it, there's definitely a before and after, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that there's so much uh to the point like you're like you're kind of saying of uh being consistent. I think yeah. that's a big thing in uh in faith, in fighting, um, just in life and like you were kind of getting out with your with the trials that God was putting through you uh with the accidents and whatnot. It's like 
okay, are you still going to be consistent in the face of this storm? Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what I've learned from faith and exactly the same thing that you learn from fighting because it's like, it's like there's so many things that can go wrong in both scenarios, but it's like trusting is like, does God have me or not? And he usually, he always does. So it's like, why worry about it? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, do you, I know that you have a companion the whole time, but do you think that like missions are lonely? Hmm. Um, how do I say this? I don't know. Depends on your companion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've, had some, I've had some really like some of my best friends are from the mission. Then I've had some other companions that like not that cool with. Yeah. I mean, just different, different people, mm-hmm. different relationships with them. Yeah. I mean, but it's so hard because you grow so much and it like, I don't know if this is going to make sense, but like, you're like, I, I don't know if you understand, but like sometimes you have like a comfortable mode of you, like a content mode, like a content version of you. That's kind of like, okay with like, I don't know, like just being like, subpar and like i feel like that version of you gets super lonely because there's like no room for that but like Mm. your spiritual self and like yourself at your best is never lonely because you do have a companion and you do have like some of your best friends and like the point of a mission is literally to be just be good friends with people and so you're always talking to people all the time and like i guess sometimes like like the American side of me would like feel lonely because like there's certain things that happen in Fiji and you're just like, that, that does not make sense. Yeah. You know I mean, like there's certain like comforts that like you don't get. And like, there's certain like cultural things that, that aren't the same. Like and the so power guess, turning off, bro. Yeah. The power turning off the, there's a lot of things that, yeah. I mean, you're just like, Oh, that's different. So I, I guess like sometimes that feels lonely because people don't really get you as much, but that's nah, just part of it, I guess. I don't know. Are you in like are you in like American missionary gear when you were in Fiji? Like did you have like the the white shirts and like the black pants? Yeah, we had the white shirts, but we had black skirts. Black skirts, okay. Yeah. I was yeah, I was curious it. about like if there was any change with that. And like still like nice shoes, or did you get to wear like sandals? No, we gotta wear sandals. So that was nice. That's that nice. was super nice. I went back in January. And even like wearing all that stuff was nice, but I was like, man, how did I like? It was so hot over there. I was like, how did I, how did I walk around in like a white shirt and tie with like, you know, what I mean, it was crazy. I was like sweating so bad. You get to go see like the people that you visited back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So I was mainly just with those people the whole time. It was fun. It was uh, very um, heartwarming and uh, satisfying to go see all of them. It was just so much fun. I love it over there. Did you get to do like any baptisms out there or anything? Or did you like get to actually? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I baptized some people. It was fun. It's not about like how many people you baptize, but how many people you actually convert. Yeah. Or not convert, but like how many people you actually care about. You know what I mean? For sure. Cause, cause like, I feel like, so, like to accurately like describe the mission, I don't want like people to think of it just like, Oh, we're just sales bros to just go from here to here to here, getting as much numbers as possible. Yeah, you know I mean, and like that stuff's important, but it's like if you do your mission right and you really care about the people, you become like family with them, and you like really care about them. And because you love this thing, like I love the gospel, I love, I love like the Bible, I love the Book of Mormon. You care about that thing so much, and you also care about those people so much that you want them to feel what you feel. And so that's why you do it. It's yeah. not about like, it's not about like, Oh, I baptized this many people or I, I did all this or it's not about that. It's about caring for other people. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. It's about, uh, it's about how many people you care about and that you are able to have the conversation with. Because yeah, exactly. I think at the end of the day, like just having the conversation, even if they don't 
Except. see where you're coming from, accept it. Like at least you're planting that seed. You know, that's all yeah. we can. Yeah, ex exactly. And I, even to this day, when I went back in January, there's a lot of people that never accepted the message, but I was still close to. And I remember just seeing those people. And it was, yeah, I mean, we're still very friendly. And it's just like, oh, that's super cool. And it's just like, even if someone doesn't have the same ideas or views that you do, it doesn't mean that you can't be cool with them. It doesn't mean that you can be, you can't be friendly with them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And so that uh, was always Anyone name their baby after you? Dude, I, I do have a baby named after me. That's, I have that's a, what I thought, dude. I have, a, I have a baby girl named after me. Amazing. Uh, yeah, they call it like a, in Fijian, Yada means name. And so like you get called Yada for like namesake. And so yeah, I have a, I have a baby girl named after me. We so got to get that baby girl a mullet. Oh man, we have to. This is super funny. The uh, so the grandpa of that baby girl didn't realize that like they named their baby after a boy. They thought they thought Kawhi was a girl name, and so when he saw me for the first time, his mind was like blown. He's like, "I thought you were a girl this whole time. Like, come on in, come bring it in." And I was just like, "Oh man, that was funny." That's amazing, that, man. That was super funny. Uh, all right, dude. Well, thank you so much for uh, being here. I really enjoyed having you. Do you have anything else you want to say just before we jump off? No, nah, bro. Thank you for having me. Dude. That was sick. That was always fun. It's always good talking to you, bro. And you're killing it. That was podcast 67? 67, baby. Yeah, that's crazy. Good for you, bro. Keep grinding. That's dope. Thanks, man. We're on that grind to 100, so we will see. Yes, sir. Let's do it. You know, we just got to keep going, man. But, Core, I appreciate you, man. Uh, can't wait to see you go pro and uh, really take this thing far so yes so thanks brother i really appreciate you all right see you later see you peace